Uh, so I'm uh, Shen from the Instacart. So uh, I think you already know that Instacart is the largest uh, like uh, grocery delivery company in uh, United in North America, actually. So we do have a lot of like fraud cases, like shopper do some fraud. Unfortunately, they do some fraud and they cost us some money. So we need to. So our need is that we need to do a real time fraud detection platform. So you can see that from the title. So there's Yoda and the ClickOS. So Yuda is another thing, uh, sorry, it's uh, our Instacart decision platform that's uh, developed by another team. So ClickOS, I'm, since I'm from the data platform team, so ClickOS is managed by our team. So today I will give, give you a very high level overview of like basically the infrastructure and how that works. So uh, to, detect the fraud, uh, to, for the, to detect the fraud in real time, so there's some uh, requirements. So the first is that the it needs to be the platform needs to be self-serve and flexible. So the reason being that there are a lot of fraud cases. Like there are a lot of rules to detect those fraud cases. So if the platform is not flexible enough, like the engineers cannot onboard new rules quickly, so we may lose some potential money. And uh, second is that the the platform needs to be low latency because we need to have the data, sorry, we need to detect fraud in real time. So we need to make sure that, that the result comes very quickly and the latency is very low so we can get the data. So the set, sorry, we can get the results quickly. And the third one is real time. So the real time we, in here, it more means like the data freshness. So we, mean, we need to make sure that we get the freshness, that we get the data that's very, uh, that's, we get the fresh data so we can use the data to make more accurate detection. So that's the sum of the requirements for this platform. So how this works is that you can see the overall architecture. So, over, so this might be a bit smaller, but I can go through what it looks like. So currently, you can see there are two paths in this diagram. So on, the, on, on here, this is the more like the injection pipeline. And on the upper side, this is the UDA, which is the decision platform to get the results. Sorry, to evaluate the rules and get the results. So I'll start with the injection pipeline. So for the injection pipeline, you can see that there were two sources for our data. The first one being the database. So we, uh, if on Instacart, we use like a Postgres hosted on AWS RDS. So this is our primary database. So this stores some like data, like the shoppers, like the orders, like all the delivery, which are very critical data. And uh, we run CDC, like built on DBZIM to get the data, the, to get the data from Postgres and send them to Kafka. And on the other side, we also have event data. So here you can see something called Mongoose. Mongoose is an internal eventing platform built at Instacart. So it allows you to send from a backend, like a Rails backend, like a Ruby backend, Go backend, Python backend. And also you can send data, some event data from Android or iOS. And from Mongoose, the data is also sent to Kafka. So to sum up, the so CC data from database and the event data from our evening platform. So this evening platform sends data uh, here. I think last speaker also mentioned the data quality is important. So in this Mongoose, we do have some like schema validation to make sure the data is like in good format. So after the data is sent to Kafka, we have a, we actually have a fling job instead of KCQ to read data from the Kafka topics and send it to data to click host. So uh, I'll go more detail on this side, but now we can more focus on the UDA platform, which is the decision platform. So this decision platform, what it does is that, so uh, say there's something happening on the shopper side, some action on their side, like they swipe the cart, or they mark some, or they deliver, mark, uh, sorry, mark the delivery as completed. So it will trigger, so actions like this, it will trigger some rules on the backend, which is, which is UDA, and uh, in this UDA platform, our analysts and the data engineers, they predefine some rules in CQ. And once the rules are triggered, the CQs could just, the, uh, the CQ, sorry, they could just uh, fetch the data from ClickHouse by evaluating the CQ and get the results. So you can see uh, the evaluation layer. So you can see two actually. One is the feature store service. There is a ClickHouse feature service. So uh, Yuda has, has, like, has two feature sources. We're more today. We're more focusing on the click out feature source. So basically, that's the overall architecture. So we have the injection pipeline to injection events to click us, and uh, on the other side, we have a backend server to call click us to evaluate the rules. So going to, uh, more detail on the workflow. So this is basically the work. What what the workflow looks like for the users of the decision platform. So you can see like analysts or data engineers. 
they write a SQL query, something called like feature definition, and convert them to rules. So the rules are loaded to the UDA, which is the decision platform. And then when the, some like actions happening on the shopper side, the decision was triggered. And sorry, the platform was triggered, and the rules were evaluated, and the decision was generated. So this is what it looks like from the users of the decision platform. So for the ingestion pipeline, we also want to try to make it more self-serve. So if you, sorry, if you, we go back here, all the ingestion pipeline are running with Flink. So it will help you to, uh, like more like an infrastructure level ingestion file. So this ingestion file takes some like YAML configurations from the user. So you can see uh, for this, I just uh, show you uh, one of the example. Like this is the CDC source and the topic and the name of the CDC source. The topic you want to uh, read. And uh, here you do some conversions, like how does the CDC field matches to the click cost schema. And after, finally, we have some click cost destinations. You can write to different destinations. And also there are some config to allow you to config the actual uh, behavior of the injection, like um, the buffer size you want, the time, of, sorry, the, uh, and also the parallelism of the fling job, basically something you can configure. So with this, we're able to uh, onboard like around like uh, 20 injection pipelines for this. So this is the injection pipeline. So finally comes to the lessons learned and future and future plans. First uh, about the lessons learned. So we have like several lessons learned actually. So the first one is the batch injection. So click cost, like every insert uh, in click cost will, call, will, uh, will generate a part on the disk. So if we insert, have more insert queries, it's not actually, that's not, uh, it will like harm the performance. So you, it's good practice to batch the injection file to make it a bulk, and then uh, insert to the click cost. And the second thing is that sorting key really matters because in our fraud use cases, we are doing a lot of point lookup, like select, blah, 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 where use ID equals something. So it's really important to have the right sorting keys here. So the third one is like security. So Instacart like is a uh, is a public company, so we really care about security. So in the previous uh, slide, you may think that there are some orders data and the shoppers data were streamed into a click house. So we need really to make sure that we have proper accounts set up on the click house, so that no one is like getting trying to guess the data. So, so make sure that no one is like messing up with the data and uh, using it for like different purposes. So for some future plans, uh, first we're going to onboard more use cases. Uh, and secondly, so we're going to do, so we are, pla we are our platform team. We offer click to different teams. So we need to do some like more capacity planning with the different teams to make sure our current capacity works for them in the next like several months. Uh, and also uh, the other thing we're going to do is that we're going to expand the role of the ingestion job. So for the, for the current ingestion job, it does not do very much. It just fetches data from Kafka, do some simple transformation or extraction of the some field, and then sync it to ClickHouse. So one thing we're going to do is that we're going to expand the role of the Flink job to make sure we can use some like Flink security to do some joinings. So when we're inserting data into ClickHouse, it's not, it's not individual table. It's like, bulk, it's like large web table, which is better suited for ClickHouse use cases. And uh, finally, is that we're going to we're currently investigating on ClickHouse infrastructure, and we're going to move ClickHouse infrastructure to Kubernetes. So currently, our ClickHouse infrastructure runs on some like uh, EC2 nodes, and uh, we it takes a lot of time to do the DevOps, like uh, configuring cluster, make sure the cluster is up, and uh, replace the node when the node is down or something. So it takes a lot of time for us. So we're investigating on the uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, and uh, something we're going to do this uh, half is to move some of our uh, use cases to Kubernetes to make sure uh, it's more flexible and easier for us to operate.